Hello and welcome to the Should You Buy for the Cougar. This is one of the new mechs coming with the 3060 Tech. We're going to take a look at its base stats, some possible configurations, the hardpoint locations, possible hitboxes based on its art, and whether or not you should buy it. But first, let's just go and look at the costs of the mech. Now, because this is a light mech, it's slightly reduced in cost compared to the mechs around it. So while everything else is $20 for the standard, this mech is $15. So you're still getting the same amount of mechs and mech bays and titles and badges, but slightly cheaper. Uh, important to note here, comparatively to previous packages, they are dropping 30 days of premium time from the standard pack. So that is not there anymore. Also, with the collector's pack, it is only $30 instead of $40. You get the special variant of the Prime. You only have 30 days of premium time compared to 60 days of premium time, which you would have in previous packages. So they are dropping premium time for these, which makes them slightly less valuable. However, let's just continue on. Uh, other standard prices apply for light mech packages. There's $10 for the Hero and $10 for the reinforcements of the E and the H. And we're gonna take a look at these variants and see if there's any pay to win or pay to optimize with them. Come on down here to the mech specs, switch over to the Cougar and position it correctly. The Cougar is a 35 ton clan Omni mech. It has a 175 XL engine that is fixed for 81 KPH pre-tweak. It has uh, endosteel and ferrofibrous, jump jets on one of the variants, the H, and ECM on one of the variants, the H. We're gonna pop over here to the Spreadsheet Warrior and take a look where it uh, rates compared to other mechs in its weight class. So we see the Cougar here, and it is now in the game. I was very happy when I could change that stat. It's a 35 ton XL with 175. It has a speed of 81 kph or 87.1 after 7.5% speed tweak, uh, whether that will be the speed tweak of the skill tree system or not. It has endo and ferro and has a few locked double heat sinks, I believe. Now these ones only say 10 double heat sinks, but these say 13, so I'm not exactly sure here. It might be a little bit uh, more, so let's just, uh, maybe unlock those for the moment. That would make it so it would have 21 tons of pawn space for a staggering 61% of its weight. So this thing, it's got the guns. Uh, it's slow, for sure. It's only, only 87.1 for a, a light mech, but it's got guns. And it still has those locked DHS, because not exactly sure on that. It's gonna have 18.3 with 52%, so still, it's in the upper echelon in the amount of pod space that it has, at least as percentage. Let's pop back over here and take a look at its Omnipods. Now, we will be able to move these Omnipods around, so we're gonna more look at it where I'm looking at the previous ones in terms of vertical, the going down, the single variant. We're gonna look at it horizontally. We're gonna go across the different components and see what we can take. Now, the first three here are part of the standard package. The next two are the reinforcements, the last being the hero. So we're gonna take that into consideration. For heads, we have energy in the Charlie and the Echo here with one energy. We also have an AMS in the hero, but we have an ECM with the H variant. So that is very powerful. You're basically going to want if you have access to it, that H head Omnipod. So that's very important. It's very unfortunate that that is locked behind the paywall of the reinforcement packages, but it's, it's gonna be, I would hope to say, almost required to make the Cougar uh, a decent mech. For left arms, we can get an energy, a ballistic, or a missile. Uh, interesting to note, the missile is only available in either the reinforcement packages or the hero for that left arm. Otherwise, you can get the energy in the ballistic, and you can get the missile, you can get a ballistic as well in the reinforcement, but you can't get a, an energy over here, so that's interesting. 
For left torsos, we can get a missile in the standard packages. We have energy in the reinforcement packages. We have also jump jets in the reinforcements and ballistic in the hero. Now these jump jets are, again, what makes that H variant so goddamn powerful is that it's the only one that has access to jump jets and that is through these two side torsos. So you could choose whether, to have, whether or not you wanted to have both side torsos and have four jump jets and jump as high as possible or you can choose to take away one of those side torsos say get an energy hard point or something along those lines and then only have two jump jets and not jump as high but save a little weight and maybe put on an extra laser so unfortunately that is on a reinforcement package but it is good that it exists on the mech for its mobility for center torsos we have nothing across the entire variant list here for right torsos we have missiles from the standard package we have energy and again jump jets in the reinforcements and ballistics for the hero for right arms we have energy and a ballistic in the standard packages and the best energy arm the four energy right arm from the C variant is in the standard packages and that's good it makes this H three energy in the right arm not as crazy so you can be like oh well that worked out because then we can have the best omnipod for that arm but it's not hidden behind the reinforcements so that's good unfortunately all the other parts of this mech is, are hidden behind reinforcements and so yeah you can get the energy and the ballistic in the standard you need to get the reinforcements or the hero to get missile but yeah so if you do different omnipod configurations you can do up to eight energy four missile or four ballistic and you could take four jump jets but that would require you for dropping some of your hard points and for the the eight energy it's eight without ecm and then it's seven with ECM. So seven energy hard points is the max you can have with ECM on the mech. Let's go over a few example builds that I put together for it. And these are some things that I actually run on my adder because this mech is going to have very, very similar weight to the adder, uh, just slightly more. So it can do some things that the adder maybe didn't find enough. Uh, ammo for just, was shy just a couple tons this mech will be able to do it one example is max SRM so four Artemis sixes with say five six tons of ammo depending on how much you want to take an ECM and some double heat sinks you're gonna to need to take the missile arms which are the reinforcement or the hero and the missile side torsos which are the standard package and this is a similar design I do on my adder called the splatter it's really powerful it hits like a truck and people tend to ignore it because it's a it's an adder what is it gonna do besides just kill you and with the ability for you to take ECM along with it it's gonna be a little bit more sneaky it's gonna be able to get around the back lines sneak up on a enemy LRM carrier and just kill it Moving on from there, we can do a big ballistic, such as, like, say, a Gauss rifle or an Ultra 20 or something like that. You could stick it in an arm or you could stick it in a side torso, depends on which packages you want to get. But you could do an Ultra 20, some four, four and a half tons of ammo, an ECM if you wanted to and had the uh, reinforcements. And then some quantity of lasers, you know, a couple medium lasers, a few ER smalls, um, maybe jump jets if you wish it. For example, what you could do is you could do the C variant here to get the ballistic in the left arm, or even the D variant to get the ballistic in the right arm, depends on whether or not you want to be left or right mounted. I say the C variant because you can just do a ballistic in the left arm, you can have like four small lasers in the right arm and then you if you had it you could steal a couple jump jets and an ECM from the H variant 
So that would make that one big ballistic mech work well. Next one is a PPC sniper. So a couple PPCs in the arms most likely, as you're going to want to be able to use these jump jets if you have them. So the Cougar Prime here, one energy in each arm, just slap a PPC in there, ignore the missile hard points, get ECM and jump jets if you have access to the H, and get some extra double heat sinks at targeting Pewter Mark 1, and do a little jump up with their ECM, snipe from a distance, be an annoying prick in some people's sides. It's kind of like a smaller and slower shadow cat with two peeps. It's probably not going to be like super great, but it's a pretty powerful little shot coming from a light mech. But yeah, that's the example builds I have. Let's zoom back up here to the top and talk about the rest of the attributes of this mech, including its uh, art here, its possible hitboxes, and its hard point locations. So you can see this mech is actually probably extremely similar to the Adder. I think these might even be the exact same legs as the Adder, because uh, the, the Adder, the Kit Fox, and I believe this all share the same legs, it's just their torso is slightly different. So I would expect it to be pretty much the exact same size as the Adder. We can see its cockpit right here, it's fairly decently leveled, it's not too high, not too low. The side torso mounts look like they're going to be right in line with the cockpit, with the arms being just slightly below, but it shouldn't be that much of an actual physical distance between them, because lights are so small. Now possible hitboxes here, these sort of protruding uh, dividers almost, was that going to make it so something in the center of that is CT and something to the side of that is side torso? I'm not sure exactly what those are. Uh, they may be quite easy to hit, so that's a little concerning, but we shall see. I would have actually loved to see those sort of slanted back and uh, kind of like an adder without its cowl. Uh, but yeah, we have those. Uh, in terms of the overall for this mech, it's really slow for a light. It's you know, only going to go 87.1. I believe that's before tweak. Or is that even after tweak? I don't know. But just, it's slow. It's only got an XL175, and it's really unfortunate that all of those really things that make the mech good, that would make the mech strong, ECM and jump jets, would counteract that slowness, is hidden behind a paywall. So you basically are required, I'd say, if you get this mech, to get the reinforcements in order to have this mech perform how you want it. Now, it's really unfortunate because you only have one copy of those Omnipods for the entirety until this thing comes out for C builds. Because if I remember correctly, you can't purchase more Omnipods. You can just have the ones you pre ordered. So you're going to have to swap Omnipods around in order to level your different mechs with this if you want to do that. So. So unfortunate. It would be way better if you could be able to purchase those Omnipods uh, right when the mech comes out, or that those jump jets or ECM, at least one of those two, preferably jump jets, some form of jump jets was available in the standard package. The ECM is nice, but the jump jets make up so much in terms of mobility for this mech. Its ability to instead of walk around something to go over it, will make up for its slowness. But not having them is going to be detrimental, so if you're gonna get this as just the standard pack, don't do it. But if you're gonna get standard and reinforcements, then it's a decent choice. But yeah, I think that's uh, my take on the Cougar. I wanna play it. I like these sort of slow lights there trying to be mediums. I think they're fun to play. I really enjoy my adder. People underestimate it, and then it comes around the corner and shoots them with an LB20. And I think you can do the same thing with this mech. But that's going to be it for now. Thanks for watching, and good hunting.